So we all have wins and losses in our lives. There is a certain art to bouncing back from an L. But to be honest, I think people have a bigger issue of actually bouncing back from a win. Let me explain. Just came from outside, it's a little warm. See, as you go through your life, you're gonna find out certain things that you're good at, man. You're gonna get into those areas and you're gonna have success. And what most people do, they're gonna try to stay in that area and beat that down know, as long as humanly possible. But a lot of time what happens is, you know, you achieve some success, but then you, you have a couple setbacks. You have a couple more setbacks and before you know it, you're spinning your wheels and you're just living in this area or maybe just slowly regressing. Well, it comes a time when you have to pivot. And the player that we're gonna talk about in today's video did just that. Today we're gonna answer the question, whatever happened to Mike Hart? All right, now before we jump into the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is an app that has access to tickets from all over the internet. And they give that access to you right at your fingertips, making buying simple. They put a score of one to 100 on each ticket, letting you know the quality of the deal that you get. One of the doper features is you can preview the view from any seat that you may be select. That way you already know what it's gonna look like before you even get there. So if you plan on attending any game, click the link in the description, download the app, and make sure you use my code FLIMLO for $20 off your first purchase. Mike Hart went to high school in New York where he became the national touchdown leader. He put up 204 TDs over his high school career. Now he went to a powerhouse school, bro. They lost one game throughout his entire high school career, 46 and one. They won three state championships. So it would have been easy to just be a jock. I mean, powerhouse school, you're the star player. Hey, but nah. Mike had a 1280 on his SAT and finished top five in his class. After graduating in 2004, he decided to attend the University of Michigan. Yo, he stepped on campus and took over ASAP, immediately. 1,455 yards as a true freshman, setting the true freshman record at Michigan. He put up nine touchdowns, had 26 receptions for an additional 237 yards. With his ridiculous rushing total, he became only the third true freshman in Big Ten history to lead the entire conference in rushing yards. Now in 2005, during his junior year, he had some injury issues. But the following year, during his junior campaign, he actually topped his ridiculous freshman total. He put up 1,562 yards and the same cat that finished top five academically in high school now had the fifth best rushing season in Michigan story history. Along with that, he put up 14 touchdowns and finished fifth in the Heisman voting. Now that ended up being his best statistical year. And in 07, his senior year, he actually drew up a little bit of controversy after Michigan came back from being down 10 versus Michigan State. Here's the comment that he made. Now, I thought it was funny. They got all excited. Sometimes you gotta get your little brother excited when you're playing basketball, you let him get the lead, then you just come back and take it from him. Which I will admit to doing to my little brother quite a few times until he got taller than me, and then that strategy didn't work no more. And this might not seem like a huge deal, like the statement that he made, but Michigan State fans took it pretty hard, man. And I found multiple forums and articles that have been written in like the last three months referencing this. Now, I think it was like 10 years ago exactly, so maybe it's like some anniversary stuff, but they still feel away about this, man. Michigan State fans. It's cool, bro. So during Mike Hart's career at Michigan, he ran for over 5,000 yards. Scored 41 touchdowns, went over 100 yards 28 times, and went over 200 yards five times. But he ain't let go of the ball, bro. I mean, during his career on over a thousand carries, he only lost three fumbles. And crazy enough, two of those three lost fumbles came in his last game, bro. And if I'm remembering the stats correctly, he had 18 carries in that final game, 1,015 carries in his career. So that means he went into that game with 997 carries and only one lost fumble. Insane. Here's the issue. <laughs> it wasn't a very big back. It wasn't a very fast back. It wasn't a super elusive back. He had just been a guy who was super reliable, who the coaches trusted, came on campus, took care of business, did everything he was asked, got a ton of carries, took care of the ball, and moved the chain, which is amazing. I ain't trying to take nothing from that. All I'm saying is that that doesn't always project to the next level. And apparently that's the way the NFL scouts felt because he got drafted in the sixth round during the NFL draft in 2008. So check this out. 
He went from having over a thousand carries in college to having two carries his rookie season in the NFL. Now, on them two carries, he ended up gaining nine yards, and he also caught an 18-yard pass from the legend, Peyton Manning, but he got hurt on the play. Placed on IR, season over. So the next year, he tried to shake back, but he got hurt again. He was subsequently cut and placed on practice squad. But the story didn't end there, man. He stayed diligent, grinded, 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 got back off practice squad, onto the active roster and was able to contribute to the team in a limited role. However, it wasn't enough to keep him from being cut again in 2011. So let's recap. Drafted in 2008, practice squad back up, practice squad cut three years later, 2011. He finished his NFL career with 264 yards and two touchdowns. Now this is that critical point, right? That critical point in Mike Hart's life. This is where you can continue to chase football glory. I've done a lot of these, what a lot of guys end up doing, and this is no shot to them, but this is another option that we, you're gonna see right here, okay? A lot of guys, what they do, CFL, they go play in maybe a different professional league, uh, but some of the older ones, they'll do the USFL, you know, whatever like that, in an attempt to one day get back to the league or the NFL. I mean, they're all leagues, right? And again, there's nothing wrong with that, man. CFL, fine league, that's pro football. They pay money. If you want to play pro football and you have an opportunity to play in the CFL, by all means, go get it in. All I'm saying here is that there are other options. So check this out. Mike Carr got cut in July. 2011. By that August, he had accepted a coaching job at Eastern Michigan. So he leveraged his football cachet, which was amazing what he'd done in Michigan, had gone pro, had a, a pro career, had a good reputation, and he didn't waste no time. Now he started coaching, bro. He was the quality control assistant. That's a made up position. Like, it <laughs> maybe it's not, man. I don't know. I never heard of that before, though. Obviously, that's not a very high ranking position. He was just trying to get his foot in the door. So, bam, got his foot in the door. Did that for the 2011 season at Eastern Michigan. But the next year, he was promoted to the running backs coach. So, 2012, 2013, running backs coach for Eastern Michigan. He kept grinding, man. By 2014, he was the running back coach at Western Michigan. By 2016, running back coach at Syracuse. And then he was offered a very lucrative deal to be the running back coach at Indiana. They didn't talk exact numbers, but it was about three times what Syracuse was paying them, and Syracuse was paying them more than all those other schools was paying them. So my man was leveling up. Now at this point, he got six total seasons of coaching, five being a running back coach. In those five years, three of his running backs have gone over a thousand yards. He had two separate Mid-American Conference Freshman of the Year players and he coached the 2014 MAC Offensive Player of the Year. He put up 1,500 yards, 24 touchdowns. And obviously, I'm not there to know exactly what type of coaching he's doing, but it ain't that hard to imagine that if you get somebody who's athletic and then you get somebody who's a thousand percent crafty and understands all the nuances but didn't have that athleticism, then pass that knowledge to somebody that got. You see where I'm going with this. So I think it's already safe to say that on a professional level, I'm not talking about college, but on a professional level, Mike Hart's coaching career has already been more successful than his playing career. But he played football his entire life. And playing football is what opened the door to get him to what he's doing today. But when it was time to pivot, he pivoted. The time coming. Get that pivot foot ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm not no quitter. Cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go get it. 